today we move on to the walls and the bulkhead. I think I'll start with the walls because they're just, it will feel like a lot of progress once they're in. I've had the installation since the first week I've owned the van and it's just been taking up space in the garage for God knows how many months. Um, so it'll be good to get that in. Uh, so I'll, I'll begin by framing out the, the walls. I'll create some battens out of this nine millimeter softwood ply. I will frame out the van and behind that will go the insulation and then a vapor barrier will cover all that insulation uh, before the plywood goes over that to form the wall itself. in it as close to a right angle to the floor as possible. To prevent your drill from lurching forwards and putting a dent on the outer skin of the van, cut a piece of pipe to a length that allows the drill to go through the first hole but prevents it from going any further than that. I've made some really good progress on the insulation you can see behind me. Um, there's not really that much to show. Um, I've, I've got a little bit of footage uh, that I'll show you, um, but there's, there's really not much to it. You spray it and you stick it. This here is my recycled plastic insulation. It's 50 mil and I'm just going to start putting it in the cavities of the van. It's places like this that it will need gluing. Uh, and I've got, I bought two rolls of this stuff, uh, one of which is a wider roll, so that will be perfect for this. I've sort of ripped one of these, you can't really cut it very well at all, you've just got to kind of rip it and hope for the best. So I've got one of these to approximately the right size, um, and then I'm going to use this Dodo Mat contact adhesive, uh, so you spray on both uh, surfaces. Uh, in a cross hatch, so if I spray this way on here, I don't spray vertically on here. So I'll do that now and try not to get it everywhere like last time. certain areas that are going to be too hard to insulate with this stuff. Initially I wanted to try and feed a length of this through the cavities in, in the, the central pillars and down here, uh, but where I've got lots of cabling going through it's just too difficult. Um, so instead I'm going to use this 7mm closed cell foam going to cut it into the right shape to cover these areas.
I've got some of this flexible corrugated plastic which I can cut to the shape of the wall. So I've shaped around the wheel arch and I've got to add on to the side to form the front edge and I've started doing the back edge. Now I'm finally beginning to get to a point where I'm happy with the shape of this end of the panel and don't be disheartened it is a sort of time consuming process. You'll find yourself going back and forth, back and forth you know, multiple times. So probably. 20 times already and it's not quite right yet. Another thing I'm gonna do just to help it slot in, because it fits nicely here if I slide it down and it's too far from the top. Uh, and that's because of where the roof starts to come out. So I'm going to use a chamfer bit to take off the back edge, uh, the side of the wall panel facing the metal. I've now got both end pieces made, or templates made. Now I've got to do the middle bit, turn that into a template, and then combine all of them into one large template from which I can cut my plywood panel. never hold, there's just too much pressure on them. But I'm going to transfer the template onto a 4mm hardwood ply, which will be much more malleable and it should go in with much greater ease. Now well, this is more manageable. I've made a bit of an error. Um, when I cut this board to shape, um, I did it without all of the screws being inserted into the ceiling panel, which means that the shape has changed now. So uh, I've screwed this wall piece up and using my nice scribing tool, I've run this along and trace this line uh, and then I'm going to cut this shape. I'm going to cut along the line so I can get the right profile on the edge of the board. Such is the thickness or should I say thinness of this uh, wall panel. It's only four millimeters thin. Um, I've had second thoughts on using screws to hold it up. Um, the screws can only be so long because the battens behind are nine millimeters thick. So the, the screws can only be 12 millimeters long and it, I'm just not comfortable with how little bite there'll be on each screw. So my solution, Actually, rather elegant, although I say so myself. My solution is to use some tea nuts. So we'll begin by drilling through. So then from the back, I'm going to take my 20 millimeter forcement bit because that is the same diameter as these T-nuts. How's that looking? I think that's pretty good. Now that I drilled the rebate, I can widen the hole. Just 